Tomorrow. This is walking and talking with Phoenix. Today's topic is probably going to branch onto and touch on a few things. Something happened at work about 15 minutes ago when I was uh, outside finishing up and stacking all the tables and chairs. That kind of uh, evoked a bit of anger. Um, just general frustration. So this topic today involves crackheads and respecting the elderly. That's that's today's foodle for your noodle. So basically stack in the chairs and there's just this regular customer we have she's a beautiful precious delicate thing you know she's like in her late 90s I think really old frail you know beautiful woman named Elma and the nicest girl you meet very soft-spoken and you know and every time I see her I just feel like giving her a big hug but I can't because I probably break her into a thousand pieces um, she was just sitting on a bench, you know, she finally got to a bench after passing me, which took her about a whole minute um, to make up that distance of 10 meters. She's a frail thing. And she's sitting on a bench, just I think near where she lives, all these apartments. And this guy in a red jacket and his girlfriend, and judging from the way he was holding himself and just moving, because you can tell there's telltale signs and they're so freaking obvious with crackheads. You can tell he was a crackhead, and you can tell he was, I don't know, in, in the midst of a mighty stirring. Um, and you know, he was just doing his swagger walk as they do. And he walks past Elmer with his girlfriend. And I didn't hear exactly everything that was said, but when I took attention, he was as he was walking past, he kind of leaned into her and started pointing his finger right in her face. And was telling her to shut her cheeky mouth. And pretty much just abused her on the spot and then kept walking off. Only to, a moment later, 20 meters up ahead, walk past an attractive young girl in a business suit and wave at her coyly. I mean, what, if that girl was 60 years older, he would have just abused her on a bench? Is that how it rolls? If you're young enough and pretty enough to, for him to want to fuck, he'll show you a bit of respect, he'll be polite. But if you're an old, if you're elderly and you, you have nothing to offer, he doesn't want to fuck you, you know? will just abuse you. What, because what, his life sucks? Because he's angry? Because shit's not going right? Because he can't find another crack hit? Or because his deal is up in the price? I mean, whatever the reason, whether it's venting his frustration, I think it's sad. I think it's sad, and it's not just him, it's other people too. Whoever falls into the category of somebody that abuses the elderly and gives them shit just for a power trip, just to make themselves feel good. How does it make you feel good? Really, I mean, how low and petty and pathetic and cowardly do you have to be to abuse a frail, delicate, lovely fucking old 90 plus woman just minding her own goddamn business like you should be doing? And this is what it comes down to is one crackheads. I'm fucking sick of crackheads. I'm sick of this fucking issue of crackheads. It's becoming a pandemic, it's becoming more popular than coffee. Goodbye coffee, hello crack. You know what I'm saying? And I've got friends that smoke crack. Everyone fucking smokes crack these days and not all of my friends fall into this category of being condemnable. Some of them are inching towards that category. Some of them will make leaps and bounds into that category of condemnable. But just in general with crack, it's like it empties your heart of emotion and, and stops you and cuts you off from being able to feel and and feel apathy and give a shit about other people and you just get lost in your head and this, this fixation, this fixation of needing more crack and it's all about feeding your addiction and it doesn't matter what the price even if you have to betray a friend and do it the biggest fucking dirty in the world just to get your little fucking paws on some fucking crack you would do it because that's what comes first not friendship, not respect, not honour not even respect for yourself and that's what it does to people it just degrades them into shit, into scum. It takes an, a lovely human being and turns them into the ugliest fucking husk of a human being that one could see, one could imagine. And I, actually, no, it's just that one could see. You don't even need to imagine it. You see people like this all around. They're not even fucking human anymore. They're not even human anymore. They're more like machines, and they've got one purpose in mind, and they'll do anything by any means to achieve their ends. And it's not an honorable end. And it's especially not honourable the means by which they go about achieving it. I think it's really serious, you know, and this is even the doof culture I used to be part of, you know, the psychedelic parties in the bush culture, you know. Back in the old days, yeah, LSD, some people would have 
drinking was the main thing and getting high. And it was pleasant for a while, for a good few years. And it wasn't co that complicated. And there wasn't so many people, which is part of it. Now there's three times as many people. And for the last few years, I noticed everybody's more isolated and separated, segregated into different groups, uh, in their cars, smoking up. And it's not weed they're smoking neither. And shit starts to get stolen. People start to get aggro. Violence starts to break out. And shit just changes for the worst, not for the better. And I see this crack entering, you know, there's, there's a lot of people in this culture still that smoke it. And they're fine because, you know, not everybody is the same on this stuff, all right? And everyone's got a different degree in, of, of addiction and being lost to the drug. Whatever the drug is, everyone handles things differently, yeah? So there's a lot of people that still do it and they justify it and it's all good. And maybe it is justified. Maybe they have the right. Maybe can afford to do it and it doesn't impede on them and their progress and it doesn't it isn't at the expense of anyone else perhaps perhaps i think with any kind of drug and addiction the tendency is for the addiction to get stronger for you to need more and it gradually degrades the quality of your mind and your heart and your ability to truly perceive with accurate awareness what the fuck's going on so a lot of people eventually do end up becoming these become these ugly monsters and assholes doing really selfish and cruel things and they didn't even see the transition they didn't even see how they wound up there and became that person they didn't even see what the addiction gradually did to them in graduating them into becoming assholes and losers so I, I, all together with crack I'm never really comfortable when I find out someone does crack I don't judge but when I hear that just to be realistic because I've learned time and time again do not trust a crackhead if someone smoke, smokes crack it doesn't mean they're a crackhead doesn't mean they have the brand crackhead stamped on their head but it means they're holding the stamp in their head and they're kind of just tapping it here and there and sooner or later there's a good chance that one that starts doing crack will end up doing it enough to really sink in that burning ember and cause a brand the good old C with a circle copyright crackhead you know it's, it's very easy once you even start doing that and picking it up to not let it go and it changes you it starts holding you if you hold it for long enough and it starts crafting you in its own hands and it cracks your soul apart it puts it back together and you're some kind of horrible mess of a person keeping yourself together in various means usually involving taking more crack so that's part of it like generally i'm just aware when people are on it because i think it does blur the lines in their perception of reality it blurs the lines of barriers and boundaries and honor and dishonor and at the end of the day I think it, it allows one to look at their own motivations and desires and then justify whatever path they need to take to attain you know the realization of these desires the gratification of you know the, the itch the scratch of their itch people will do anything to justify it the more the addiction has them by the balls and now I've touched on that I've touched on crack I've touched on how I hate it and how I think it's gonna be the downfall of the world for a large part if weed isn't making people fucking stupid and unmotivated and depressed and oh, then cracks is going to do the complete opposite instead of people sitting around doing nothing and being lazy and blending into the background like hobos people are going to start being too active and in all in all the wrong ways breaking into houses mugging people being violent you know there's going to be this real divide and so many different drugs fucking up people in different ways but crackhead is the most dangerous and i think crack is the most dangerous because it, it involves people that don't even smoke it people that don't even touch it they get dragged into other people's problems and other people's addictions and their outbursts just like that poor lady did if he let's say was a little bit more angry and he saw elma sitting there on the bench maybe she reminded him of his mother or his grandmother who he hated for some reason you know because she used to steal all the spoons i don't know you know what if he what if he hit her what if he did anything to her and she died what because he's got a problem that he can't control so it's nasty and that's what it comes down to as well elderly man like there's a book i read and it said that once upon a time the elderly actually had a place in our society where they they were a very essential component in terms of you know the success from raising of a child development of a person and it was a very different system that was adopted back in these times uh, compared to the system now, a lack of. 
This idea came from a book of Conversations with God by a guy named uh, Neil Donald Walsh. And he talks about how now, or how back in the day, you'd have pretty much all the young ones, you know, young, fit and able people would be working their butts off and building their civilization and procreating because they were young and fit to do so. And once the child is born, instead of these children, these young and fit and able people being branded as the owners, you know, of the child and they had to look after them, instead of that, the children would actually be given to the grandparents and all the elderly in the tribe. It didn't even have to be related because this is back in tribal living. Back in tribal living, so no civilizations. And the elders would raise the child because they were actually more developed and fit and healthy mentally. They had the experience, the wisdom, the knowledge. So, and that would allow the, the younger people to continue about their ways, you know, working and gathering and hunting and whatever. And it worked, you know, basically when someone's young, they can still pursue and do whatever they need to do and pursue. They can have children and still have an involvement but most of the involvement goes to the, the grandparents who contribute what they can. And they still have a very vital role in these societies and these tribes. And it worked. Everyone had a role. And it makes sense. You want to be raised by those with experience and wisdom. You know? And basically, now it's, you know, if you have a child, it doesn't matter how old you are, you can still be a fucking child yourself. And you are, all the responsibility gets heaped on your shoulders. All of it. And yeah, sure, family might help out, or your partner might help help out, or a number of partners might help out for a while here and there. But uh, these days, it's a very different setup in general. There's no really uniform kind of protocol that it, everyone follows, like the tribe days. And a lot of the time, the elderly, elder, elderly, you know, just get left out, pushed out of the equation. And they, they're treated as a burden. You know, everyone knows that whole perspective. It's the burden slowing down. Nobody really wants to, you know, dedicate much time to the elderly when they're young and free and they have all the possibility to achieve and they're too busy pursuing things and doing things. So as a result of this, all the elderly are left in their homes, twiddling their thumbs, trying to remember as much as they can, fighting against the uphill battle of atrophy, memory atrophy and dementia and they're just lonely and sad and empty and they become husks um you know as opposed to still having a vital role to play still having some contribution you know like they did back in the tribe days so it's a very sad equation now where we have children and people who are essentially incapable of adequately raising a child forced and having heaved onto them these responsibilities when if we just change our system we included the elderly in this process which happens sometimes you do get grandparents that raise a child and a lot of the time those people that are raised turn out all right i found pretty well tempered and they, they've learned more than what a child could learn from another child who happened to fall pregnant in their teens or 20s which is to me if you're in your 20s just like me you're still a child i'm still a child you know there's no point arguing that so that's my food for thought on the day. It was a bit frustrating and I wanted to get that out. I think people in general need to learn more respect, especially for the elderly. Um, it's a shame the world is the way it is. Things have changed so much and we, we can't see how all the pieces could fit in a better way that would benefit everyone and leave nobody out to suffer. But you know, it's the way it is because that's what we allow it to be. Um, and yeah, if you know, if you do smoke that nasty stuff, please, Please, keep it under control. Keep it behind closed doors. Don't let yourself out. Treat yourself like a werewolf who has the capacity to break loose and do some really horrible things. And if it's a full moon or if it's a night where you've got to just hit that itch, then keep yourself chained up inside. You know what I'm saying? Unless you have got it under control and you do it in moderation and it doesn't have you by the balls and it's not holding you and crafting you, you know, then it's fine. Otherwise, take some freaking responsibility for yourself don't make your problem other people's problems because that is really, really, really lame. Doesn't matter how much drugs you try to take to help you forget that fact. That's really fucking lame. That's all I got to say about that. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe if you like. Otherwise, fair tidings to you. Thanks.